Hi, I'm back here again in Swift Pause Back Office, and in this video I'm going to be taking the families that I set up in the previous video and using them in a mix and match rule. Mix and match rules are quite versatile um, and they can be used for a number of different things. So I'm going to start here in vouchers, raffles, and discounts in the main part of the screen, and then in mix and match. Um, I've already got some mix and match rules set up here. For now, we can just ignore those. Um, and what I intend to do here is create a rule uh, to specify that if a customer orders um, a juice product as well as a toast product, they do get a 10% or 15% discount on those two items together. I'm going to start by creating a new rule just by clicking on New Rule down the bottom here. And you'll see that there are a list of different types of rules that can be set up. Volume discounts are used when um, you're offering a discount um, across a purchase of several of the same item. So for example, three of the same bottle of wine um, for 10% off. A buy X, get X offer is something similar. However, it allows you to offer the customer a buy one, get one free or buy two, get one free type of deal where um, the, the, the item which is given for free is the same as the items that are purchased. A buy X get Y offer is uh, similar again, however that's used when um, you want to offer the customer let's say um, a free newspaper with a purchase of a coffee. Um, so they're buying a, newspa uh, buying a coffee um, and they get a newspaper for free. Uh, buy X money get Y is similar again However, that denotes that if a customer spends a particular amount of money in a transaction, they can have perhaps a free newspaper or a free coffee um, or some other incentive. Buy X, get multiple is really just a combination of um, several of, of, of these types of things. Buy X and Y for Z is the one that I'll be using today. Uh, and that basically means if you buy one product in conjunction with another product, you get some kind of incentive. Um, in this case, it's going to be a discount. Uh, and maximum allowed in sale is if, for example, you had an item on promotion um, and you wanted to limit the number of items that a single customer can, can purchase in a transaction. So I'm going to go ahead and create my buy X and Y for Z rule. And this is the screen that you'll see um, when you first create a rule. The first thing you'll want to do is specify a name and I'm going to call this rule breakfast discount. My X family is going to be one of the families that I set up in the last video. So that's going to be um, toast and my Y family is going to be the juice uh, family that I set up. X quantity is basically how many of this item or this type of item is required to trigger the rule um, and, and same down here. For now that's going to be one and one. Um, so basically what I'm offering is if the customer purchases one item from this family and one item from that family, they get a particular d discount. Um, by default the rule will be enabled um, and uh, members and items not on promotion will be disabled. You might like to check this if um, you're applying a rule to something that might already be on a promotion and you don't want to give two discounts on the same item. You might also want to flag um, a specific location for this rule um, where it's applicable. Um, so for example this probably wouldn't be applicable in the bottle shop but if this was a mix and match rule that allowed a customer to get, say, three bottles of wine for the price of two, um, then you would want to have that enabled. A little bit further down, you can specify the start and end dates as well as the start and end times. So you might like this to be available between the 15th and 20th of November, um, but only in the morning. Um, and that means that if these conditions are met any time out of that time, the rule won't be applied. And similarly, you can enable or disable this just for a single day or a set of days. 
Um, so it might be like a, a Sunday breakfast special or something like that where you only have Sunday ticked. Um, and a little bit further down, we're pretty much defining what we want to happen when the conditions up here and here are met. So I'm just going to tick the little discount radio button and put 10% in the field here and change the start date to today. So you can see that that field is now green. Um, if either the start or end date is red, that rule won't be um, that rule won't work because it's outside of the parameters um, specified to to trigger the rule. Now I'm going to go ahead and send that down to the terminals and we'll have a look at how it works. Okay, so I've updated my terminal and I'm just going to drag it onto this screen so that you can see it. And I'm going to go ahead and meet the conditions of the rule that I set up. So the first thing I'm going to do is ring up a toast product and then I'm going to ring up a juice product. It doesn't matter which one I choose, so long as it's one of the toast products and one of the juice. Now you can see that the product line has gone purple, and down the bottom near the subtotal you have a mix and match discount, um, and that specifies how much has actually been discounted in value, uh, which works out to be 10%, uh, and that's how that rule works. If you have a mix and match rule which is currently active and you want to deactivate it, uh, you can do that quite easily just by navigating back to mix and match and editing that rule and taking the tick out of enabled. Now you might do that just because um, this is a rule which might be used in the future and you don't necessarily know when. Um, so you just want it to be there waiting until you're ready to start using it uh, and then you can go ahead and quickly enable it rather than having to set it up from scratch. So that's what I'll do here. I've just taken the tick out of enabled and I'll go OK. And now if I were to try to use that um, discount or use that rule um, at the terminal, it would no longer work. So now if I try to uh, ring up those same products, you can see that no rule has actually been applied. So that's that. That's how to create a by X and Y for Z rule. In the next video, I'll cover some of the other rule types and different circumstances in which they might be used. I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.